Hey everyone, this is Nick from the Botch Pit. You want some of that new content, right? I see you shiver with anticipation. Today, we're going to be discussing my favorite part of Promethean the Created, Flux. This is the first in a series of videos dedicated to Flux, which includes Pandorans, the Sublimati, the Sentimati, and many more following this overview. Truthfully, this was all intended to be one video. However, there's way too many awesome things I want to cover with it. For this series, I'm going to be primarily using Promethean the Created 2nd Edition as the basis. However, I will also be incorporating Promethean's additional source books, Pandora's Book, Strange Alchemies, Magnum Opus, Saturnine Night, as well as Night Horrors, The Tormented, to further enhance the lore throughout. Part 1. Definition So, what the flux is flux? The Divine Fire, of which gives Prometheans their life, is utterly transformative as a whole. However, that transformation can be expressed as Azoth or Flux, reflections of each other. Think opposite sides of the same coin. According to the text, Azoth is evolutionary transformation as directed by the principle of unity and cohesion. Azoth joins, merges, and makes things whole. Azoth is life-giving, from the first thunderbolt that brought about the potential life-giving chemical reactions that in turn brought about life, and it follows where electricity leads. Think of this as a drive toward completeness. Flux, being its reflection, is anti-evolutionary transformation as directed by the principles of diversiveness and dissolution. Flux breaks down, separates, and removes the spark of life. Flux is also consumptive. It is a dynamic agent of conflict, and it seeks to overcome, or be overcome by, Azoth. As a result, creatures of Flux are driven into near-psychotic states by the conflict of Azoth and Flux within them. Prometheans vary on their opinions on whether Flux is considered good or pure evil to them. Some consider it to be just manifestations of the same thing, the Divine Fire. To others, if any insentient force qualifies as good, it is Azoth, the building materials of the human soul. Likewise, if any force qualifies as evil, it is Flux, which erodes the wholeness of mind, body, and soul. Anakin! Chancellor Palpatine is evil! From my point of view, the Jedi are evil! So this brings up a really good point. I didn't answer the question of what is Flux. So far, I've answered what Flux does, not what Flux is. The best way to visualize what this force is, is how it affects the world around it. Part 2. Sources of Flux Pandorans. The result of a Promethean creation that hasn't fully gestated. Pandorans, also referred to as the Unborn, are a painful reminder of what could have been, but never will be. A Pandoran is a twisted, broken creature, a mockery of life infused with flux and inevitable, unending madness. Prometheans are their favorite prey. However, when they are deprived of their nourishment or entertainment, they fall into a state of dormancy. That is, after it's already turned its attention to mortals. Simply existing in an area is sufficient for Pandorans to begin tainting their surroundings with flux. The second video of this series focuses primarily on these creatures. Quash Malim. Also, full disclosure, I'm doing my best with these pronunciations. This stuff is hard. There are cues everywhere, there's apostrophes, yeah. These are the agents of Pyros in the Chronicles of Darkness, formed from the Divine Fire in response to unique needs. Each Quashmal is born from the fire with a singular purpose, a mission that it must carry out to the best of its ability within a strict time limit. Succeed or fail, the Divine Fire reabsorbs the Quashmal when the mission is over and the mission is never repeated. Prometheans and alchemists who study the Quashmalim describe two distinct choirs of them. Elpidos, corresponding to the Pyrus form, Elpis, and Lilithem, corresponding to the Pyrus form, Flux. Elpidos coincides with Elpis, the creative or distilling fire. They encourage the final work, guide artists, foster new creation, bring throngs, which are bands of Prometheans, together, and so on and so forth. In appearance, Elpidos are the most likely mistaken as angels, as their natural forms are bright, shining figures wreathed in flame, and, as the direct consequences of their missions, they often display powers that provoke religious awe or revelation. Now, let's talk about the Lilithum, the agents of chaos and destruction to the Elpidos order. 
Lilithum are the Koshmalim of Flux, the destructive and entropic fire. They awaken Pandorans, tear throngs apart, force Prometheans backwards on their pilgrimage, and work to force the breakdown of institutions, societies, and individual lives. Lilithum manifests as horrifying mockeries of flesh and biology, warped humanoid forms, or monster forms usually taken by Pandorans. There is also three orders of power, Lesser, Greater, and Arch. Firestorms. Prometheans are among the greatest concentrations of flux in the world, and as such, they consider it a light by accident or design. Not every Promethean experiences the pain and terror of Pyros gone amok, but most do at some point in the pilgrimage. The Aesothic memory warns of firestorms, also called Eumenidean vortices. Some Prometheans see firestorms as punishment for real or imagined sins, but the fires have no more judgment than a bolt of lightning. It is possible for a Promethean to fall prey to flux or build their energy up too quickly, sparking a firestorm. But this vortex could also be created by the final work, a greater quashmel manifesting in a pyros-rich environment, or by the actions of Pandorans. Some Promethean, especially the Sentimani, even trigger them deliberately to use the fires of flux as a weapon. When Pyros rages unchecked in the world, the effect lingers beyond the actual duration of the firestorm. As the raging maelstrom burns itself out, they blanket the area they affect in what amounts to flux fallout. The fallout may linger for days. Could be worse. How? Could be raining fire. Clone Death Strange creatures cloned from Azoth-infused DNA do not normally possess any level of flux as they are more related to creation as provided with Elpis. However, when they die, Azoth seeps from them incredibly quickly. Depending on the amount that die, immense levels of flux can be released rapidly in this fashion. Pyros Mishandled a Promethean who makes some critical error when releasing Pyros might understand some of what Pandora must have felt at that critical moment when she realized both what had happened and it was too late to close that box again. The failure to pass the Divine Fire onto their progeny, resulting in the spawning of Pandorans, is an event that no Promethean ever forgets. The heart swelling with joy as the form of one's carefully crafted child begins to move is suddenly enclosed in a small fist of dread. When the would-be creator realizes that it isn't new life that moves their child, but the erratic twitching and spastic thrashing of flux, ripping the body apart and heralding the birth of new Pandorans. Part 3. Flux Tank Flux does not just accumulate in places. Living things or objects in such places are all susceptible to flux. This spiritual contagion poisons a person, causing them to carry a flux rating wherever they go. More than one Promethean has tracked down a hidden nest of Pandorans by identifying the flux taint in mortals that worked or lived near it and followed them back to the source. Part 4. Terrain and Structures in terms of terrain and structure, there is a difference between places under the wasteland effect and those under flux, although some may be influenced by both. The two main overriding principles of flux versus wasteland are dissolution and anti-life. The dissolute principle of flux tends to manifest first in inanimate objects. The corners of buildings, the edges of knives, all these sharply defined things begin to dull and weaken. Plaster crumbles and in a matter of a week, the accumulation of dust in the area increases at a dramatic pace. It is impossible to keep it dust free. Objects that remain in this location begin to weaken as well. Moreover, this desolate principle extends to electricity, of which carries the divine fire. The principles of flux cause electricity to ground and short out more often than normal, dispersing the charge. Batteries run out of power quickly, copper connections corrode to the point of not being able to carry a charge, and in some extreme cases, on-site conductive material loses all of its conductive properties. Food kept in this area is still edible, but ceases to be appetizing. It smells like antiseptic, the color is faded, and gone is the flavor in favor of waxy pliability. Needless to say, it doesn't nourish very well, and those that stomach it are usually hungry again soon afterwards. Tied into this is the dissolution of many of the basic principles that drive thriving life. Plants in the area wither and do not continue to grow, and fruit and blossoms wither quickly from the plant. This withering is subtle, with a simple touch of brown on the edges of leaves. Many of the insects and other simple life forms in such an area die out, and growths such as mold do not form. This also extends to the microbiotic level. Soil loses many of its rich nutrients as they break down into useless component parts, and the soil becomes dry and ash-like, without the rich consistency needed for plant life. 
Part 5. Effects of Flux Flux Empowerment Creatures of Flux are drawn to areas of Flux for specific reasons. In such locales, they feel stronger. Also, the more they remain in a place, the stronger they become. And as a direct result, the stronger they become, the more they favor that place. It's a thing. Mentors and older created often warn young Prometheans that facing down Pandorans in their lair can be very unwise as they have a very clear home turf advantage. Madness The degenerative effects of flux of the human mind are quite pronounced. Though flux does not in and of itself cause madness, it certainly makes it harder for a person with derangements to resist them. Animal Viciousness in flux-tainted areas, animals become harder to control, acting angry and predatory. Flux-tainted animals often seem to be rabid and terrifying, prone to sudden, strange shifts in mood. Physical Degeneration Flux-borne effects on the physicality of living creatures are rare, generally only occurring in areas of prolonged, strong flux taint. In those areas, however, the effects are quite dramatic. Flux drives living, animated things for a state of inanimate being. Flux can cause nerve damage, causing creatures to become less capable of feeling nuanced sensations due to numbness and extremities. Nails thicken and grow larger, and the gums begin to peel back from their teeth, revealing more of the bone underneath, resulting in a strange, grotesque smile. Eyesight dims, and cataracts are common among those with long-term exposure, as is the lessening of hearing. Other senses are similarly impacted, with olfactory and taste bud sensitivity dramatically reduced. Bodily possession becomes sluggish, and these creatures become tired quickly, are more susceptible to disease, and do not heal easily. Additionally, they find it impossible to conceive within areas of flux taint, and are likely to miscarry if they remain in it. Physical Mutation If a mortal or animal is present when the flux of an area spikes suddenly, the change may be recorded in the very flesh of the creatures there. The mutations are strange, but not overtly supernatural and can be explained, often theorized by doctors medically. Some scholarly sentimani maintain that these mutations are caused by latent genetic traits within the victims activated by the flux they are exposed to rather than a force acting outside of them. Well, huh. It's kind of strange that Nick keeps mentioning the Sentimani. It seems like the perfect opportunity to push some agenda. It's not like he's bold enough to, you know, to tease that, you know, maybe a new Chronicle is coming or something like that. That would be just so mean to stab you guys between the ribs. Why would I ever do that? But what do I know? Part 6. Flux Spawn A variety of strange things that are not properly Pandorans, Promethean, or Quashmalim exist that seem touched by Flux. They're rare, they're urban legends, they're from first edition, but they're so cool I have to mention them. Cryptid. In places where Flux has risen sharply, or where an object or creature heavily tainted by Flux has been absorbed back into the local environment, the Cryptid may rise. The Cryptid seem to be normal plants or animals. In fact, Cryptid are quite healthy. Through a medical examination of them always reveals a bezoar within them, a small, hard stone of calcified matter at the core of their bodies. In truth, this solid matter is their body's reaction to storing flux within them, though it can't be said to actually be physical flux. It is a substance that reflects the presence of a spiritual principle, much as the strange liquid that forms in Promethean bodies called vitrol is a physical reflection of the potential for change the Promethean possesses within. These animals and plants go through their life processes normally until they encounter azothic radiance. At this point, the bees are within them uncoils, rapidly dissolving into their form, transforming them into the cryptae. They develop the low cunning and hunger for the azoth-infused flesh of Prometheans. Animals become vicious and predatory, more apt to attack a person who stands in their way than to avoid him. Only predators and scavengers ever become cryptae, as a carnivore or omnivore must consume the flesh of a heavily flux-tainted creature in order to become cryptae. Generally, this is the course of a Pandoran within 24 hours of its destruction. Plants, on the other hand, become somehow more intelligent and animate. Their intelligence is still a low, savage understanding of their environment rather than an intellect, as humans consider such things. 
but this intelligence is often more than sufficient to learn Prometheans into traps, with the plants remaining completely still until their prey is close enough. Though cryptae plants are animate, they do not have the ability to uproot themselves and travel about. Plants often become cryptae because items that are heavily tainted with flux are left nearby, or because the corpse of a Pandoran, having assumed its final dormant form, has sat nearby for months or even years, slowly breaking down due to rain and weather, leaching its flux remnants into the soil. Se'irim In the case of animal cryptae, se'irim are created when the dead, tainted animal is buried near other animal corpses. The bezoar within the living Pandoran corpse breaks down and poisons those corpses near it. Using this simply results in a lingering, faint flux taint. But when the bezoar is particularly powerful, it may actively animate the other nearby corpses, which rip themselves apart and become Pandorans. These creatures always bear some features reminiscent of their original body. Lacking in exothic radiance, however, they likely enter dormancy immediately. However, plant cryptae also exist. When a plant cryptae is eaten, its bezoar is likely to be exposed. Should this bezoar be accidentally consumed, it poisons and kills the animal. The animal then splits, tearing itself apart as Pandorans are born from it. As mentioned, these Pandorans always bear features to the original animal body that formed them. Likewise, they most often immediately enter dormancy unless there is a source of exotic radiance nearby. You see, what we're talking about here is an organism that imitates other life forms and it imitates them perfectly. When this thing attacked our dogs, it tried to digest them, absorb them, and in the process shaped its own cells to imitate them. This for instance, that's not dog, it's imitation. We got it before it had time to finish. Conclusion Well, how about that? We hope that you enjoyed this overview of Flux within Promethean, the Created. As mentioned earlier in this broadcast, this is the first in a planned series of Flux and its inhabitants in the Chronicles of Darkness. And trust me, there's a ton to come. It's not easy having a good time. Even smiling makes my face ache. Also, as a general disclaimer, if there's a particular guide and game line you'd like us to explore, leave a comment, join our social media channels, heads up, they're located in the description, contact us through Carrier Pigeon. Whichever method you enjoy, get involved and reach out to us. If we don't get a guide up on it immediately, we can definitely answer your questions on any of our channels. This has been Nick from The Botch Pit. Thank you.